Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in this video I'm gonna be going over how to create really really good thumbnails. I've posted over 4,000 thumbnails across a multitude of channels. I have a good handful of viral videos under my hand so hopefully hopefully this video helps you create better thumbnails. So before we get started, feel free to sign up for my free webinar training where I go over my 10 ways to go viral on YouTube and also join my free Facebook group. We're really engaging, there's a lot of people active on there and as a bonus for watching at the end of this video, I do have a bonus tip to help you all create better thumbnails. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. So in regards to all the thumbnails I've ever posted, I kid you not, I've created so many videos with YouTube automation. I want to determine what I think a good click-through rate is. So to sum it up, I think a good click-through rate is over 10%. Um, YouTube themselves deems that three to seven percent is the average click-through rate and I watch a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of YouTubers say that three percent is considered a good click-through rate so whatever you decide a good click-through rate is why not aim for ten percent you know don't really settle just because you see three percent click-through rate you can most certainly approve that I mean the highest click-through rate I think I've ever gotten was like 26 percent and this this was with over a hundred thousand impressions so there's no reason why you can't get a better click-through rate so my recommendation for you is to aim over 10 percent and the reason why is because out of all the videos that have ever gone viral for me a very common factor is that over 90 percent of them had a good click-through rate at some point of over 10 percent so if you're achieving or aiming for 3%, I think that's low because again, YouTube themselves even deems that a good click through rate is 3 to 7%. And so aim for 10%. There's no reason why you can't hit a 10% click through rate. I can hit a 10% click through rate. There's no reason why you can't hit a 10% click through rate. So the next thing I want to go over in order to create better thumbnails is types of thumbnails that I teach very highly. So the first type of thumbnail that I teach is something called a single scene thumbnail. So the idea with single scene thumbnails is that you can look at the image and instantly know, okay, what is this video about and why am I attracted to it? So the thing with single scene thumbnails is that you don't want a lot of distraction and I go over this later on this video, so keep on watching till the end to hear my spiel on that. But single scene thumbnails are, think of them, the best way I can describe them is that they're basically movie posters movie posters in which you know movie posters they're just a really cool looking image usually so that's the way i teach my thumbnails and single scene thumbnails can not only apply for tv show niche or movie niche they apply for celebrity niches uh, crypto niches technology niches uh, luxury niches <clears throat> single scene thumbnails okay so throughout this video i'm going to be going over types of thumbnails that i think you should really keep in your arsenal for whenever you create thumbnails but single scene thumbnails have worked tremendously for me in creating viral videos and I have a few examples here so these here are uh, TV show slash thumbnail single scene thumbnails uh, we have some sports uh, MMA boxing and then we have crypto but do you see how the image itself just kind of is very cohesive altogether there's not a particular uh, thing in the image that distracts away from all the other things happening in the image every bit of the entirety of the single scene thumbnail helps to the entirety of improving the click rate for the video so single scene thumbnails this is a one of my go-to thumbnail strategies that i teach my thumbnail artists to do and my go-to is that i just tell them hey can you just create like a, a single scene thumbnail that just looks really really good and appealing and as you can see the colors i'll be going over later on this video how to uh, achieve colors like this so you don't want to miss it watch to the end I, that's one of my bonus tips so the next type of style of thumbnail I want to go over is split screen thumbnails so notice that we have single scene thumbnails and we have split screen thumbnails so out of all the 4,000 thumbnails I've ever posted about 80% of it it falls under either single scene thumbnails or split screen thumbnails split screen thumbnails work really well because they work from a left to right sequence so you look at the left side, then you look at the right side. You look at the left side, right, Justin Bieber, and then you look at the right side. And it's it's a trigger, right? You can instantly tell, like, oh, what's happening here? She's changed a lot. Oh, what's happening here? It looks like he's going through some troubles. Oh, what's happening here? They're, they're kissing. Um, this bottom right image is like a variation of a split screen thumbnail. Instead of it being 50-50%, you just have a single scene thumbnail, and then they look at the circle, which is considered a split screen thumbnail. So again, all my videos, 
they either fall along the lines of a single scene thumbnail or a split screen thumbnail and this is very very advantageous for when you're creating thumbnails for your videos you want to hit that really good click the rate of a 10 percent you can't go wrong with doing a single scene thumbnail or a split screen thumbnail so point number four i want to make after have having posted over four thousand uh videos with thumbnails is that minimal or no words may actually be, be may actually be better for your video so Here's a case example of one of my boxing slash MMA channels in which I set up two buddy split test variations. And as you can see, the original outperformed the variation. So if you're familiar with TubeBuddy, basically the left hand side is the original thumbnail on the video. The right hand side is my attempt to kind of make a better thumbnail. But as you can see, you know, there's no numbers on this one. It's less, right? And it performed better. And again, there's no numbers in this thumbnail. The original performed better. No numbers in this one. The original, again, performed better. So notice how with this bottom left hand uh, split test, greatest of all time, it's less, it's more, more is happening in that thumbnail. The original did better. So to give you some context, the original is again, the original thumbnail that was attached to the video. And the variation is my attempt at I uploaded another thumbnail onto TubeBuddy to see which thumbnail uh, would achieve a better click-through rate. So keep in mind that anytime I get even a 1% change or a 0.7% change, I kid you not, um, that may be all that it takes for me to get that video to go viral. I recently changed one of my uh, tech video thumbnails and the click-through rate difference was like 3%, instantly generated a $10,000 difference. So. If you want to implement tests like these or you're interested in how to set up tests like these, comment down below. I'd be happy to make a video if some of you are watching up to this point. But think about the difference in terms of if you just slightly improve the thumbnail, uh, click the rate percentage by as little as 3% and that video goes viral. I kid you not, I had this happen to me the other about two weeks ago. The video made an extra 10 grand. Easiest 10 grand I've ever made in terms of all I had to do was set up a split test on TubeBuddy. And keep in mind, this does require a legend plan of TubeBuddy. And I do have affiliate link down below in my description. And if you use the code VVPBuddy, you'll get 20% off. And as a disclaimer, I would get a commission if you do decide to use TubeBuddy. So the next point I wanna make with thumbnails is do not repeat your title, okay? This is a huge waste of space that I see some YouTubers make, and it's really redundant, you know? Why have your title in both your title and your thumbnail. That makes no sense to me, honestly. Um, anytime I see or get on calls with students and I see their thumbnails and what they have in the title is the same exact words of what they have in the thumbnail, it's really wasted leverage of space in terms of how can you improve your click-through rate, you know? Your thumbnail should be used to accompany what the title of your video is. So if you look at these videos, you know, some of these don't even have words, but it has a better click-through rate and it accompanies what the title of the or content of the video is. So do not repeat your title. The next point I wanna make is keep it at most two faces slash two sets of eyes. As humans, we are instantly drawn to eyes, right? So anytime you see a face, you look at the eyes. It's just human nature, human behavior. If there are multiple faces in a thumbnail, we tend to get lost on who, or sorry, this should say who. <laughs> we tend to get lost on who to focus on, right? So again, keep it at most two faces. If there's, imagine there was a cameraman in the back of this, or sorry, I'm pointing, but I should be pointing with my computer. Imagine if there was a cameraman in the back of Rihanna here. Wouldn't you get distracted? Imagine if there was paparazzi and we didn't blur these people out here. Wouldn't you get distracted? So at most, keep it two faces, two sets of eyes. Rule of thumb, two faces at most, including three people is pushing it. But the exception to this rule is if you're aiming for a single scene thumbnail where the entirety of the image is used as a thumbnail. So notice how uh, some of my thumb, oh, sorry, not here, but I do have some single scene thumbnails where it's a group of people. But again, if the central focus is on an individual person. The central focus is on the entirety of the image itself. So at most, keep it two faces. Sometimes you can push it to three, but there is a, there is sometimes exceptions, especially when you're trying to create single scene thumbnails. So as for my bonus tip for this video in terms of what you can you do to make better thumbnails, it's photo enhancer. So I really wanna show you my cookie cutter that I do across all my thumbnails, pr practically over, I'd say I've created 4,000 thumbnails. I'd say over 30, 
800 of them, I've at least done photo enhancers. So let me show you what I mean. So here's a picture of Zion Williamson, and I'm going to show you exactly what I do in order to create better thumbnails. So first off, right off the bat, uh, this is Photoshop. You're going to need Photoshop to do this. Photoshop has a really good select subject. So what I'll do is I'll usually select the figure, and then I'll click Select Mask, and then the smoothness I'll do to 70, and then the contrast I'll do to uh, 20. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and do Output to New Layer with Mask. So can you not? This is what um, I do for all my thumbnails. You don't want to miss this. Keep paying attention. I highly recommend Photoshop over Canva, but disregard him getting cut off. Sometimes I'll clean it, but I want to show you photo enhancing. How can I make this image look better? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this image just so I can show you the before and after. So okay. So my go-to is that on Photoshop, I'll click on image, I'll go to adjustments, and then I'll go to brightness and contrast. I'll do 3020. That's usually my go-to. And then I'll do adjustments and do saturation. I'll saturate it by another 20. Anywhere between 10 and 20, but we'll go 15. So notice how when I enable and, di and disable the layer, see how much brighter he starts to become? Those subtle differences matter so much, okay? So again, this is before and this is after. Before and after. So now the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to images again, adjustments, and then adjust the curve setting. So I'll do this three times. Do I'll do it for the first triangle while I'll bring it just a tad bit up, okay? And then the shortcut for this is uh, Command M. And I'll do it for the lower, see the square? I'll also increase this here slightly. And then I'll open that window up again. And then I'll include the middle ever so slightly as well. So notice how I did I adjusted the curves three separate times. But let's keep looking at the image before and after, before and after. And I'm able to do all these photo enhancers within 30 seconds or less just because I'm so used to it. The last thing I'll do here is that I'll right click on the image, click on blending options. Uh, I'll do a stroke usually. So disregard, this is a clean mask. But what I'll do is I'll do a, a white stroke. Okay, so he sticks out. And then I'll do an outer glow. So he sticks out even more. So notice the before and after once again. So this is Zion Williamson. Okay. Before and after. See how much he sticks out more? This is what I do across all my videos, a lot of my thumbnails. Sometimes I may not include a stroke, but those photo enhancers are absolute game changers when it comes to improving your thumbnails. I highly recommend you rewatch the ending of this video and as well as the rest of the video because creating thumbnails is such a key point when it comes to having successful YouTube videos. But I usually do all these photo enhancers again within 30 seconds. It shouldn't take too much of your time at all. But aside from that, that's my bonus tip for creating better thumbnails. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, comment down below. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, with that being said, also join my free Facebook group where I'm constantly engaging with my uh, community there, helping people grow YouTube automation slash cash cow channels. If you've watched up to this point, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm practicing doing full screen. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.